Okay, Jared. So part, we're gonna go take two here. Take two. Okay. So first off, great turnout. Uh, you got teams that they get a they get a round off. Well, each team gets one round off. Okay. So Acid, one of the best teams here, gets round one off. And then they're probably gonna go out there and it's gonna be war. I can't wait. But let's talk about bringing the college teams in. Did everybody have the opportunity to get the Cedar Point tickets? Yeah, all the participants, yeah, they get a uh, code, QR code. All the participants get a QR code for the Cedar Point ticket on day two. And the park is open, which we talked yeah, about. Yep, yep. The international yeah. staffing issues they have. They can't let people in because of COVID, and they can't leave their country. Today, uh, go tomorrow to the park. But yeah, they're light on staff right now, but um, you know, things are open. You know, people, I know people are like, my wife and kids went yesterday. Oh, they? But yeah, they went yesterday. So, so. You guys got passes? Do you get like... Yeah, yeah, they did the deal a couple years ago. We usually do them every year. You know. Do you get them? Yeah. Jared's a Cedar Point pass holder. I did not know that. Makes sense, though. But when you look at this great competition so far... Uh, Clarkston, Michigan. You brought a couple Michigan teams in. You got two Perrysburg teams. You got Acid, one of the top clubs in the state of Ohio. What's the ultimate goal of Streetsboro? Streetsboro. Uh, the youth teams, obviously. The Clarkston youth team. So, yeah. So, we want to be open up. Usually, we do a lot of Ohio stuff, but we want to have teams from other states for this event. You know, we're looking to have this event every year on this weekend. We figure, you know, it's after, it's a regular school is letting out. You know, it's usually after the, um, you know, Virginia Beach duels and before Disney, and you know, if we throw some freestyle maybe next year, and then who knows? You know, who knows what happens? I know Clint did a great job. You know, once I mean, we talked with them when they canceled, uh, not canceled, when they moved U23s, you know, out of Ohio, out of Ohio, and it was last minute, three weeks before. So we were talking, and he's like, "All right, put it on hold. We're going to be at Spire." And then when they moved from Spire, it was the last minute. Okay, let's get it back going. So we were talking months ago about it. And, uh, yeah, we got eight college teams coming in. Should be a good. I'm, I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see a dude running sprints after a match. This is the Scotty Burnett effect, I like to call it. It's the Scotty Burnett effect. we got a dude running sprints. Okay, I like that. But uh, it's Perrysburg guy. So, you know, when Clint Musser and you put your head together and then you start getting feedback and Coach Breeze and Lake Erie, they don't have those minute Bloomsburg, right, Clarion, Kent State, Cleveland State, all these uh, Binghamton. Yeah, they don't have the budgets like – all the even other mid American mid majors, right? So they this is really good for them, and they're getting fresh competition. And if you're Lock Haven, who had no season except for the MAC championships, this is like a gift. Right. right. When you guys put your heads together, what was Clint's vision? We'll just give the guys mat time, like you said. You know, they had a plan. We're going to go U23s threes and acting, or we're going to go to Spire, right, in their backyard. And then three weeks before, you know, those guys are training. When they move it, right, the budgets come into play. You know, without having, you know fundraisers and things this year so i'm like clint we got a venue we're gonna have mats down let's get something together bring the college guys here you know he was like what can we do here and we got the mats down and i'll do the youth and the high school in the morning and then you guys come in the right afternoon so you know they're coming in this afternoon you know so they can drive in make it a one-day event right bring and bring can drive in and can drive in this morning so they come in last night to the hotel stay the night and they can move the park tomorrow so it kind of works all the way around. They're going to get some mat time. They're bringing their extras. We'll have mats down. We'll get, you know, we talked about the officials crew. Got some quality officials. So they'll get some extra mat time. So that's, I guess, how it came came about. And, you know, we'll see what happens with U23s next year. And, you know, it's a dual format. So you can bring the whole team. Right? So U23s, you might not say never not to Omaha or whatever. But, uh, this is the first maskless event. Yeah. The first yeah. fully open event for Cedar Point. Yeah. And do you have the whole event? I know you didn't rent the whole venue. But are, is it just wrestling today? Yeah, no, yeah, there's nothing going else on, so it's just us. Uh, I've never been here with it like this. Yeah. There's uh, normally been basketball, basketball or volleyball right? or yeah. something going on. Right. Because yeah, it's so massive. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow they got a basketball tournament going on. Well, I, they're supposed to. It's supposed to be a Sunday at 30. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, there's basketball tomorrow in here. So, you know, they got to turn it around, you know, and all that stuff. So, so you're always going to have hiccups. You're always going to have people mad about officiating. But so far, everything seems good. Yeah. Tigliano, you just said caught him at the end of my other one, right? Yeah. He's an NCAA official, right? Um, we got some new new guys. Uh, Dan Stoll, he was an Edison wrestler. I think he ran for Heidelberg or how Northern. I'm drawing a blank right now, but he had the 400 record. He was like All-American this year, a couple weeks ago. You know, if you saw him, you'll know him. But yes. New official, so he's getting some that time. So. Quick question, quick question. There's a vision for the National Middle School Duels. You know, he's exceeded his vision in, in Don D'Amelio and what Genoa does, and BTW kind of runs that event. 
It's Dom D'Amelio, though. He's the oh, core of it, right? Guy, yeah. And it has grown into an absolute monster event. His son's here. Yeah. Right? And his okay. son's I mean, he's, he's in the shot right now, actually. His son is. But is there growth like that? Is there a future looking for growth like that in this event? We're going to see you get through this weekend and see what the feedback is. But, yeah, we have the room. Like, right, we have six down comfortably here. You know, we could dump uh, Put two, uh, 12 more down easy, and then you jump up here. 18 more. 18 here. So you can well, put 24 well, mats well, down almost. No, it'd be, you know, it depends how we pull these out. You can fit 18 right here comfortably, and then probably two or three up there. Same 20 mats. 20 mats. But we'll see, you know. Don't want to bigger, put it too far ahead. Always, yeah, bigger isn't always better, right? Dom's model, exact. Yeah. That, right? Let's stick to the 32 teams, put 16 mats on, everybody's running some. So we'll see where it goes, you know what I mean? But um, looking to keep it first weekend in June, so if it's a freestyle type of event, I'm so obviously. Jared, thank you for the time. I got to go grab all these coaches, talk to them. Good luck at, at the event. Run smooth today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call some matches here, probably the championship match uh, in the afternoon sometime. So cool. thanks, Jared. Thanks.